Today I'm going to show you how I smoke a beef brisket. Okay, so some of you have been asking me about how I do my brisket and others are asking me about my smoker setup and uh, I refer to this as my Franken smoker. I've taken a reliable smoker and made it a little bit better with a uh, digital controller, but we'll get into that here in a second. This is a Bradley smoker and uh, some of you may be familiar with it, but it has a system of these wooden pucks, these little round pieces of pressed fuel that automatically pushes in about one every 20 minutes. So each puck gives you 20 minutes of smoke. I have enough fuel rounds loaded in there for three hours of smoke. And that's what I want to give my brisket, three hours of smoke, and I'm alternating. Every other puck is alder and apple. So you also notice on top, I've got these two metal donuts. And that is because the last two pucks that this pushes in just to get wasted getting the third puck in line pushed out over the fire so by putting a couple of blanks in there those will do the job of pushing those pucks out onto the fire when it comes their time and maybe that'll make more sense when you see inside let's show you inside we're just now preheating i've only just turned this on in the last minute or two what we have here not real easy to see in this light but uh five pound brisket that giant brisket you saw me holding in the picture the other day, uh, that was 16 and a half pounds. I cut that down into three roughly five pound briskets and trimmed the fat off. When it was all said and done, I trimmed two full pounds of fat off that entire 16 and a half pound brisket. But um, sitting there up towards the top, my brisket, and then down here in the bottom, pan of water, and you can see the element glowing back there. That's the heater for the cabinet. And eventually here, I'll probably have to uh, force start this thing, but uh, there'll be a, some smoking biscuits out here on the, the landing. We push the go button here. Let's see if we can't get this in. And it drop down, receives one biscuit, pushes it in. We'll do that again because the first two we don't go far enough there we go we drop down now we have two in line so now you understand those two metal pucks will be the last two in line when we're done one more push there we are that biscuit seat on that last plate that's going to heat up and uh, start to smoke here real shortly. Once done, the next one will advance into place and that first one there will fall into the pan of water, extinguishing it. But also that pan of water is gonna heat up to its boiling point and it'll be putting steam into this cabinet the entire time that the brisket's cooking. So we have moist heat and that's important so that the brisket does not dry out. It's gonna be cooking for oh, eight or nine hours of actual cook time. And you can see here there's a probe Right there on top shelf for reading the cabinet temperature. And then I got another probe plugged into the meat. And that is where this thing gets a little bit high tech. These wires are threaded out through the vent in the top. And they plug into the back of the controller. And this controller, what it's going to do is the temperature on the left there is the temperature of the cabinet. We just close the door so it's gonna start climbing up again. And it's gonna crank up to 225. And it's gonna stay at 225 for however long it takes. The temperature on the right is the temperature of the meat. It just came out of the refrigerator, oh, half hour ago. And it's still basically refrigerator cold. It's, I rubbed it yesterday and it's been sitting there marinating in a dry rub all night. When that internal meat temperature reaches 195 degrees, it's technically done cooking. At that point, the controller will drop the temperature of the cabinet also to 195. The meat cannot climb above 195 if it's in an oven that is 195. 
so we can maintain that 195 degree temperature for three more hours. It doesn't continue to cook, but it does continue to get more tender during that time. I'll have to open the door of this cabinet a few times and top off that water dish. It will boil completely dry probably three, four times over the next nine to 12 hours. So um, that's my Franken smoker. That's the Arbor PID controller that I've got on there that basically takes this somewhat smart smoker and makes it very intelligent. So see the temperature climb in there already. The other advantage of using a PID controller is that the therm thermostat control on this thing is a slider down here on the bottom, a slider switch, and it just determines how much energy is going to that heater in the back. It takes it a long time to get up to temperature, and then you have to fiddle around with it and try to match get your temperature to stay where you want it based on the gauge on the door and based on how far your vent is open. By putting a smart controller on that thing, I close the vent way down just enough for those wires to come through, turn that that thermistor all the way to the top so that heater is cranked full bore. And when that temperature reaches that 225 degrees, this controller will start cycling it. It'll maintain that temperature perfectly for the entire duration of the cook. So there you go. Next time, uh, next time you see this thing, it will be time for me to pull it out. And uh, we'll see what kind of results we have. I'll show you the next step in my brisket cooking process. Well, here we are. Oh, it's a little after 8.30 in the morning. So where are we at here? 10, about 10 hours of cook time so far. And I've had to add water twice to that pan overnight. But uh, we are not quite at our temperature yet. So 10 hours in and uh, almost there one degree away in fact it's that 225 that's the temperature of the cabinet and 194 that's the current temperature of the meat as soon as that meat switch clicks up to 195 that controller will drop the cabinet temperature also to 195 and it will stay there for another three hours so we're looking at roughly a 13 hour uh a 13 hour cook on this no. will not be opening the door anymore until it's time to pull this meat out but uh smell good I smoked all night or three hours anyways the smoke was coming in the windows we had the windows open last night because it was warm I could smell the smell of the smoke it was fantastic I'm just uh hoping we get that one degree while I'm sitting here watching it that one degree can take 20 minutes you know take a while so it might happen right now while we're watching or I might just give up and we'll see what happens oh, there it is it's beeping to let me know that it's that it's changed. Yeah, it only just blinked 195 there for a second. And that was just enough. So now if you watch, I don't know how quickly the temperature will drop, but it's going to the next mode now. The heater has turned off, and that cabinet is going to go ahead and drop down to 195 degrees. It might take a little while to get there. So here we are. 13.1 hours later. So I guess that would be what? Six minutes? 13 hours and six minutes later. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this beast out. And of course, I remember being asked one time in school when I was going to college. And uh, we were learning about thermodynamics, and a teacher asked, in all of nature, there's only one natural element that shrinks when you heat it rather than expand. The correct answer was rubber, but one guy says, is the answer beef? And we thought that was funny. The instructor thought it was kind of a jackass response, but there's some truth to it. It's definitely not as big as it used to be, but uh, 
Look at that. That is a gorgeous brisket. Now the next step is for me to, well, what they call uh, FTC. It stands for foil, towel, cooler. Wrap it tightly in foil, wrap that up in a dense, heavy towel, and then stick it in a cooler. Uh, that's to lock the heat in. I'm not gonna do the cooler. This thing's been already cooking at a low temperature for hours and hours, but I'm gonna do the foil and the towel for two hours, and, uh, and then we'll take the first slice off it and see how it looks. Okay, so let's see here if I can't hold the camera in my left hand and film myself trying to cut the meat with my right hand. And, uh, oh, this isn't going real smooth here. The board's sliding around and the angle sucks. I mean, that brisket's pretty. That looks nice. Good grief. This board's sliding around again. And camera angle. Jesus. Can't seem to focus on both at the same time here. Oh, Jesus, it's like a monkey humping a football. Good grief. Well, this is doing no service to the deliciousness of this wonderful piece of meat here. This is, I mean, it's beautiful meat. I'm trying to demonstrate that, but my God, this cinematography sucks. Um, I'm going to go get my tripod. We'll see if we can do this again. Warning, the footage you are about to watch contains graphic depictions of silky, tender meat being sliced and pulled apart with bare, sticky fingers. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> 